Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I will show you an example of predicate logic verification using Z3. Consider this example. No books are gaseous. Dictionaries are books. Therefore, no dictionary is gaseous. That perfectly makes sense in the context of logic. However, we will ask Z3 to prove it, okay, that this conclusion is correct based on the premise that no books are gaseous, dictionaries are books. We wanted to conclude that no dictionary is gaseous. I will show you how I can model this using Z3 and verify the conclusion is correct. So first we declare a, an abstract object. Okay, this declare short means you are creating an object, abstract object. We have a book here. So we need to model what is a book. Okay, yeah. A book is just an object. So you can imagine book being a function from an object to a Boolean type because an object can be a book or it need not be a book. That is the reason why we are mapping an object to a Boolean variable. Similarly, something can be gaseous and, and need not be gaseous. That's the reason why we are mapping the object to a Boolean type. And then dictionary, similarly, something can be a dictionary or need not be a dictionary. So that's the reason why we are modeling all these things, like books, gaseous, and dictionaries as a function from an object to a Boolean type. So this is what I'm talking about, an object to a Boolean type, similarly for gaseous and dictionaries, okay? So if you want to visualize this, right, what I'm essentially doing is I create a domain here, a domain in this case is a bunch of objects. We don't know what they are, they're just objects and we map them to true or false, okay? So we don't know exactly which object maps to true, which object maps to false, but this is general abstraction of this function. Start modeling the premises. The first premise is that no books are gaseous. How are we going to do that? We need to have a free variable. For example, X is a free variable, which is an object. No books are gaseous can be modeled as shown here. What we are saying is that you can't find an X such that it is book. At the same time, it is also gaseous. So there cannot exist something that is the meaning of no books or gases, right? You can't find X, X is just an object such that B of X and G of X holds true. Yeah, books and gaseous is not possible. That, that's the reason why we are saying not exists. The second premise is that dictionaries are books. Here, any X you take, okay? If it is a dictionary, it is book. So essentially you can see like this, here is a dictionary set and here are the books. If something is here, it naturally means it's part of here, right? So that's the reason for the implies. This is dictionary. This inner circle is dictionary. The outer circle is the books. All dictionaries are books. Okay. That's the reason for the implies. You can't say D of X and B of X because there are things here that are not here. So that's, that's the meaning of implies here is that if something is present here, it's also present here. All right. And the conclusion is that no dictionary is gaseous, right? That's the conclusion. So we are saying there doesn't exist a X such that it's dictionary and gaseous. Now we want this to be proved with the help of Z3, okay, automatically. So how do we do that? We negate the conclusion as we have done for the predict, as we have done earlier for the proposition calculus. We create a solver object. We add our axioms. There are two axioms, right? Coming from the hypothesis we have. No books are gaseous. Dictionaries or books are the two axioms. So we introduce the axioms to solver. We negate the conclusion. The, the reason why we negate the conclusion is that if the, if the solver says unsat for the whole thing, that means this is false. This means this has to be true. The conclusion has to be true, okay? That is the reason why we are negating the conclusion. Okay, this is the same thing we talked about during the propositional logic verification. Now let's see whether Z3 can show this is an unsatisfiable thing, meaning this whole thing is false, therefore the conclusion has to be true. Let's try that. So I'm going to call Z3 and in less than a minute it shows, meaning the conclusion has to be true because unsat means this is whole thing is false, right? This whole thing is false and not of something is false, the something has to be true. So the conclusion is true. That means that doesn't exist an object X such that it is dictionary and gaseous. All right. This is how we can model for all that exists, not, and, and all of those things used, which are needed for predicate logic. Not all of the predicate logic can be decidable. Okay. What it means is that there may be formula like this that are not decidable by Z3. So you will see Z3 will return unknown in that case. It was not able to detect the correctness. Okay, that's that's a fundamental limitation of predicate logic. We, we can't model everything and automatically verify like what we are doing now. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much for your attention.